How can we make predation more realistic in our simulation? So far, it's basically just been a case of answering two questions. Does a creature want to eat meat? And can it find and get to a smaller creature? If the answer to both of these questions was yes, then it would just eat the smaller creature. That works, but it's a bit artificial, so I thought I'd run through another simulation while explaining some updates to make predation a bit more interesting. We basically need to look at two factors. First, it's very common in nature for predators to take down prey that's larger than they are. There are many strategies for this, ranging from teamwork to poison to more creative solutions. For the moment, we're just going to focus on the ambush strategy, which is pretty common. The second factor is how prey avoids being eaten. Again, there are a lot of potential strategies, but we'll focus on a creature's ability to perceive and avoid danger. To achieve this, we need to add two stats, stealth and perception. Before we start, just note that we have a few distinct regions on this map, and I added regional reporting so we should be able to dig into the stats on each continent if it looks interesting. As a bit of background, all creatures have a diet stat, and this can mutate like any other. Ratings range from minus 99 to 99, with negative numbers indicating a preference for plant food and positive numbers indicating a preference for meat. The willingness and likelihood of one creature trying to eat another scales with this rating. For example, if a creature has a diet rating of 87, the first thing it will look for when hungry is meat on the tile it currently occupies. If it finds some, then great, it'll take what it needs and it's done for that turn. However, if no meat is available, it will search the tile it currently occupies for eligible prey, which we'll talk about later. If there's no prey, then the creature has two options. The creature can search for meat on adjacent tiles or, if it's available, it can try plant food. To decide, the creature will effectively roll a 99-sided die. If it rolls an 87 or higher, it'll search for food in an adjacent tile. Otherwise, it'll check for plant food and only move on if its current tile is completely barren. The same logic applies to plant eaters, but in reverse. From a predator's perspective, stealth is effectively a tool to overcome some physical limitation. For example, when used in conjunction with their other attributes, stealth enables cats to take down prey that could easily overpower them in a straight-up confrontation. It also allows things like crocodilians or mantids to catch prey that would have no problem avoiding them under normal circumstances. From prey's perspective, stealth is a tool to avoid becoming prey. There are some very creative and effective methods for achieving this, but the goal is very consistent. Can you convince a predator that you're either not there or not on the menu? Perception is pretty simple. Can you find your counterparty before they find you? So how are we going to implement all this stuff? First, we need to change the basic functionality of the predation system. Being more carnivorous essentially means that a creature is more reliant on being an effective hunter than it otherwise would be. This means it is more likely to have specialized weapons or adaptations that allow it to hunt more effectively. Take, for example, a tiger and a brown bear. If these two were to confront each other, my money's on the bear. It's bigger, stronger, and, importantly, it has less to lose from injury since it can eat literally anything. However, if you were to focus on which one could more effectively hunt large herbivores, the tiger wins all day. This is because its hunting strategy, claws, teeth, and pretty much everything else about it is optimized for this purpose. We can simulate this by scaling a creature's willingness to take on prey and their attack power not only with size but with diet. So an animal that's fully invested in carnivorous behavior could take on prey that's twice its size, an omnivore with an even split of plants and animals could take on prey that's 50% larger, and so on. However, a predator isn't guaranteed a meal just because there's prey on its tile. First, each creature will check to see if it notices the other. This check compares creature A's perception to creature B's stealth, and then rolls to see if creature A notices creature B. And the same check is done by creature B. Note that this roll is modified by size, so a small creature is more likely to notice a large creature than the other way around. In practice, the entire system looks like this. Does the predator notice prey? If not, then its turn is over and there is no action. If so, we check whether the prey notices the predator. If not, then the predator attacks with an ambush advantage, which basically means its attack is twice as powerful. If so, the predator will still attack, but without any advantage. When an attack occurs, the prey will roll for evasion. If it succeeds, then the prey escapes and the predator's turn ends without a meal. For now, this simply compares each creature's speed and rolls to see which one wins. If the prey does not manage to evade the predator, there is a final roll to see who wins the actual fight. If the prey wins, you guessed it, the predator goes hungry. If the predator wins, it gets a meal. This final roll takes into account the creature's respective sizes, diets, and whether there's an ambush advantage. In case anyone wants more detail, here's some spaghetti code for you to try and decipher. And that's the predation system we have in place for this simulation. There are a few other things to bear in mind. There is a cost associated with both stealth and perception. Being stealthy reduces a creature's overall movement speed, meaning it takes longer to travel between tiles. However, note that this does not affect the speed rating used for combat calculations. Perception has an energy cost, so being highly perceptive means a creature needs more food and water. As a final note, perception has another impact. As creatures travel from tile to tile, they leave a trail of scents which can be detected by other creatures. A higher perception rating increases the odds of detecting that scent. So that's it for updates. Let's get into our simulation.
We already have some interesting patterns emerging. Both islands are investing in speed, but the eastern island is particularly specialized. This is at the expense of all of their stats, but there are notably sharp drops in stealth and perception. I think the reason for this is that the eastern population quickly specialized in a herbivorous diet, so there is essentially no benefit in being very stealthy or very perceptive, and this is supported by the data. Interestingly, the fall in perception followed the fall in stealth, which makes intuitive sense. Why spend energy being highly perceptive if everything is obvious anyway? That said, correlation is not causation, so take it with a pinch of salt. The western island is a little bit different. Its focus is still on speed, but not to the same extent. The population is almost entirely omnivorous, and interestingly, we have a population of larger creatures and a population of smaller ones which are managing to coexist. This means that there is predatory pressure on the population, particularly for the smaller creatures, and we can see that both stealth and perception are utilized to a greater extent than they were on the eastern island. It's a little surprising to me that they aren't more utilized given that their cost is relatively low, but hey, evolution do what it do. The creatures on the western island are also significantly larger than those in the east. This might be partially to do with the fact that the western island has this big desert, whereas the eastern island is primarily rainforest. It might seem counterintuitive to have larger creatures in more resource-scarce environments, but if you've seen some of my shorts, you'll know that larger animals tend to be more energy efficient than smaller ones due to Kleiber's law. If a smaller creature was to run out into this desert, they would probably just starve to death, but a larger creature should be able to cross it without issue. Finally, there's just more variation on the western island. For example, we have some creatures that are able to use stealth to a significant degree, and we have some obligate carnivores. There's a point where the western island suffers a mass extinction, and creatures only survive in this small area. I'm not sure what caused this, but it seems to coincide with the decline in the omnivore population in particular, and also the peak size of a population on either island. It may simply be that the island did not have enough calories available to support a population of this size with this speed, so all the omnivores were forced to eat each other. Interestingly, the surviving group had a population which was a little bit more focused on stealth. I'll leave it to you to figure out why that is. From here, the trends were relatively consistent, with speed continuing to dominate. However, it does seem that the Eastern Island found an upper limit shortly before the simulation terminated. That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.